Hello, hello, welcome back to A Course in Miracles and A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love on Enlightened World Network. I'm delighted, as always, to be able to offer this material in two different places for you. So thank you, as always, for tuning in and subscribing. And for all of your likes and comments, it's really, really wonderful for me to know that there are people out there being impacted by this material, which is why I offer it. It's why any of us as spiritual teachers, as guides, coaches, ministers, whatever we want to call ourselves here in the world, that's why we offer this material, because we don't know who is going to need to hear what we have to say. I have no idea who is going to be impacted, destined to be impacted by what I'm about to say for the next 15 minutes or so. And it's quite a lot that I have to say, but I don't know if it's going to completely turn around your day or your evening. It may completely alter the trajectory of your life. And I cannot and will not withhold it. This is my responsibility as a teacher, simply to show up and serve as a conduit for the Holy Spirit, for Jesus, right? For the voice for God. That's what I do. That's what I'm doing right now. And that's what I'm going to do for the next 15 minutes as we go through line by line. Oh yeah, today we're going line by line on this one. Lesson 325 in the workbook. All things I think I see reflect ideas. That's the idea for today, lesson 325. All things I think I see represent ideas. Big and powerful stuff. Now, if you're a student of one of the many teachers of manifestation techniques or manifestation practices that are out there, you'll want to pay specific attention to today's idea. We'll be talking about how that actually works. And as always, as I have on multiple past videos in this series, I invite you to go beyond simply sating a physical desire. So you can make a really, really nice dinner show up tonight. So you can make a lover show up this weekend. Great, right? So you can have a new house. Actually, Cindy and I have just moved into a really nice new house. So you can do that. So what? Go further than that. I hope to inspire you to do that today. Yeah, all of that works. We'll explain how. But I invite you to go beyond just a Mercedes Benz. I invite you to go beyond a new house or a hot, sexy lover, a six-figure income or seven figures or whatever, whatever you've got. Next step, right? And when do you determine that the next step needs to happen right away? Well, is the hot, sexy lover bringing you lasting happiness, the Mercedes? What if somebody rear ends you this afternoon? I'll tell you, we got rear ended in our brand new Nissan back in February, and some of the parts are still on back order. It's May. So, my point in all of that is next step, deeper, deeper. Ready? All things I think I see reflect ideas. Now you've heard me say here in the multiple other videos that I've done, and they're numbering probably about 400 now, I would have to guess. What's really interesting is that there's nothing or no one out there. Everything that we appear to see, and Jesus is very clear right here, right here in the idea about appear to see. Mm -hmm. 
everything reflects an idea. What we see in the world supposedly outside is actually going on in our own minds. It's a reflection. It's an image that's been produced in our own minds. This may or may not be a strange idea to you. It may or may not be one that's difficult to grasp on an intellectual level. And then, you know, if it is, so be it, right? We're not asked again here in the workbook for students to just blanket believe everything that we hear. <laughs> Some of these ideas may seem completely incredulous to you. And if, you, if, if you're in that boat, no problem, right? No problem. We're simply asked to contemplate them and we're simply asked to put them into practice. So if all that you do on a given day here in the workbook, if all you do is return your mind to the day's idea, that's amazing. That's great. It's perfect. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And incidentally, that's all that's really required of us. It's just the little willingness that the course talks about. That's what we supply. Let our inner teacher do the rest. That's the path anyway, as we discover, as we discover. So everything that we see reflects an idea, right? It reflects something that's going on in our own mind. When we see something painful, we've had painful thoughts. When we see something beautiful, that's because we've had loving or forgiving thoughts. And this is how the manifestation techniques that exist in the world actually work. It's the same principle. If you think about a hot, sexy lover long enough, guess who shows up? If you think about the peace of God and want that, guess what shows up? What's beautiful in the world, what we judge, right, as beautiful, what we feel is beautiful, like a sunset or a, a blooming flower or a cute baby puppy or, or cat, right, is symbolic of our oneness as Christ. It's symbolic of our own life. It's symbolic of our wholeness, of our beauty, yeah, our happiness and joy. What we see that's painful, like the nightly news, shootings downtown, you know, people burning and looting, domestic violence, political violence, a war going on in Eastern Europe right now as we speak. It's all symbolic of thoughts of separation. So let's go through then. These are principles that I've talked about here. And you may you may not be familiar with them. If you're not familiar with them, you're hearing it for the first time. All right, you heard it right from me the first time. I won't be the last person to ever describe this process to you. How do I know that? Well, because you're interested in A Course in Miracles and watching me on YouTube, and there are a lot of other videos out there, <laughs> aren't there? So you have been indulging that part of you deep down that knows there's something more, that's heard the call. So thank you for answering it. It would be very kind of you on behalf of everything that lives to continue watching this video to the end. Because as I said a couple of minutes ago, you never know, I don't ever know, what I'm going to say that's going to impact you greatly. Perhaps I haven't said it yet, so stick around. So the idea that we'll go through line by line here is all things I think I see reflect ideas. This is Salvation's keynote. This is Jesus talking here. What I see reflects a process in my mind, which starts with my idea of what I want. Okay, that's the first sentence. I'm going to comment on it, and then I'll be very clear when I'm quoting Jesus again in A Course in Miracles. So this is what we just talked about. It starts with an idea of what we want. 
We are invited, specifically invited here in A Course in Miracles, in a workbook for students here, we're offered to, we're offered the opportunity and we're invited and encouraged to want the peace of God. And only that. Deep down, this is why you're watching this video. This is deep down why you feel dissatisfaction with all of the material toys that you may have manifested, despite the fact that you might be filthy rich and live in a fabulous community. That doesn't make any difference. Nothing against all that. We need to have money. We need to have food on the table. Yeah, right? Something deep inside you is saying, next step, please. Right? All of this process starts with an idea of what we want. If you want death and violence, guess what's coming? If you want peace, oneness, wholeness, guess what's coming? All right, delving back in, next sentence. Remember, it starts with an idea of what we want. From there, the mind makes up an image of the thing. The mind makes up an image of the thing the mind desires, judges valuable, and therefore seeks to find. All right the mind formulates an idea about what it wants, then makes up, makes up a picture of what that looks like, and then looks for it, goes searching for it, making it, in fact. These images are then projected outward, looked upon, esteemed as real, and guarded as one's own. Right, the mind goes seeking for these images, finds them, projects them outside of itself. This is why we see what appear to be other people. This is why we see what appear to be trees and mountains and oceans and plants. They appear to be apart from us. The mind looks upon them and judges them as cool, right? Or as, as great or desirable or undesirable, any judgment, right? The mind then esteems them as real, as Jesus says, it, it classifies them as real and labels them reality and then guards them like a dog. Seriously, our human experience is characterized big time by defining and defending personal territory, is it not? It's defining and defending personal territory in the form of these ideas that we project outward. There is no outward. It's all going on in our own mind. So Jesus continues here in lesson 325. From insane wishes comes an insane world. Yeah. From judgment comes a world condemned. And from forgiving thoughts, a gentle world comes forth with mercy for the Holy Son of God to offer him a kindly home where he can rest a while before he journeys on and help his brothers, help his brothers walk ahead with him and find the way to heaven and to God. Really interesting stuff. Now I invite you to go back and, and read it yourself, whether you read it out loud or internally, well, it doesn't make any difference. But that's the paragraph that Jesus uses to elaborate on the idea, all things I think I see, I think I see, reflect ideas. And we rightly say, think I see, because there's nothing out there. We can choose a loving thought or a hateful thought. Now, if we see judgmental thoughts, it's because we've had them. If we see things like political violence, like war, 
It's because we've had judgmental separation-based thoughts that thought that this thing had different needs than another thing that looks enough like it that we can classify it as the same species, whatever that means. Everything we think we see reflects an idea. And if you read and reread this paragraph, which naturally I invite you to do, well, what's going on here is that it really all starts with this idea of what you want. So if you've gone through the workbook, whether you're doing it on your own or whether you've been doing it with me, if you're wondering why the idea that above all else I want to see, I want the peace of God, ideas like that, if you're wondering why those ideas are in the workbook, it's because of this. All of what we see in the world starts with an idea. It's all taking place in our mind. And there is nothing, no thing out there. If you can see it with the body's eyes, it's taking place in your mind. If you even think about it or conceive it naturally, that's taking place within your own mind. It makes worlds. It makes worlds. So what then do you do? Forgive. Loving thoughts. Go all the way back to the very first idea in this paragraph and formulate a wish that you want the peace of God. Make that what you want and all you want and then guess what? That is what you will see. I mean, the opposite of that, of course, applies too. Want violence, get violence. That one's kind of easier for us as human beings, isn't it, to, to understand and to grasp? Because if we go down the street shouting at people and flipping them off, naturally we're going to incur a violent reaction or at, at best we're going to incur people getting away from us and then they may curse us behind our back and that's that rude neighbor who flips everyone off and has a scowl on his face, right? That one's easier for us to conceive, but it's the same principle. This is why spirituality is mind training. Is it mind control? <laughs> like, like that's a bad thing. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Because our minds have been out of control, freaking out of control. War, genocide. Yeah, violence, opposition, that's a mind out of control. We're invited in the workbook for students, as in all spiritual practice, to want the peace of God, to desire a path to peace, to formulate a wish to experience loving kindness and peace in the world. And here on the spiritual path, this is what we're looking for. In fact, it's what we're all looking for, whether we are consciously aware of it or not. We do not have to be consciously aware of this for it to be going on. So, this explains why you've always felt deep down. And you know, there, you may have gone for decades without feeling this, but all of a sudden, boom, it, it crops up again, this sense that there's more to it than this. The sense that despite all of these things that you've managed to obtain <laughs> in the world or achieve or, or whatever verb you want to use, despite all that, you're still not constantly consistently happy, and there's more. 
there's more to it, the peace of God. It's what we all seek. That's why we have this thing, this group, this assortment of, of practices and rituals and procedures and, and things that we call spirituality. It's because we're searching for this peace. And it's not out there. It's in you. It is you. So I invite you to let that one sink in today. It's who you are. Let it shine out. Okay? Be seeing you.